Okay, so you want some sort of advice in terms of making an effective study schedule. Well, I think I've got some tips that could potentially help you and not just making that study schedule, but also making sure you stick to that study schedule and making the most out of it. So yeah, I hope you guys find this video enjoyable as well as informative and yeah, let's just get straight into it. Okay, first tip and arguably one of the most important is to plan. like plan the stuff that you're going to revise and plan the stuff you're going to study for because if you have no sort of plan you're not going to get anywhere or at least you're not going to do as much work as you hoped you would so what I suggest doing is either on a piece of paper on Google Sheets or any sort of calendar software or app or whatever just making sure you have some sort of a plan and I will kind of go over how to do this later on but making sure you have a plan in what you're going to study how you're going to study it and how long you're going to study it for uh, because that way you hold yourself accountable for doing those tasks and you're more likely to do them. The way I do it nowadays is through the app called Structured. I have it over here and basically, I mean, there's nothing here right now, but you can basically structure your day-to-day -day activities and specifically I use this for like planning out when I'm going to do certain tasks but I don't usually use this sometimes I just do it on Google Sheets especially when it's like serious um, if you remember back in year 11 last year when I was in year 11 I had an entire nine week revision plan and that's how I structured my like studying and I am planning on making an updated one for this year as well so stay tuned for that the way it works is I can just add any sort of tasks here and and let's assume um, I'm reviewing Alkenes, I can like change the, the time I wanna do it for and when I wanna start it. So at the moment it's like slightly past seven o'clock, but I can like decide here, uh, if you wanna start at like eight o'clock your revision, I can decide to do Alkenes for like 30 minutes and just, yeah, I can change the color and things on this as well, which is quite cool. I can just add it and you can see it's nicely laid out there. It's a really visual way of showing your day and making sure you know what you're doing and when. And um, it just helps in actually making sure you do the work because I have notifications on for my phone as well. So then it would remind me once I finish Alkanes to do Alkenes and then when I finish Alkenes to do like, it just depends on whatever I'm doing on that day. But it's, it's really useful. I highly recommend you guys download it and see if you like it or not just this. I used to at one time use Outlook and just put it into like the calendar events there. It doesn't matter as long as you have something then it's completely fine. Now one other thing that I find really important is don't plan like two weeks worth of revision like a month beforehand. I would suggest to plan your revision uh, maximum a week beforehand. I, I usually like with this app structured, I usually do it the day before. So, or sometimes even like few hours before, because if you, especially for this, if you assume you're gonna be free at certain times and it turns out that you're not and you have like something to do, it can disrupt everything and just make you not wanna do any work at all. So especially when you're trying to figure out a time to do it, you, what you need to do is like, what I do at least is I have like, three, four hours perhaps if I'm doing that much revision, just labeled as revision. And then when I come to that three, four hours, that's when I actually make it specific what I'm gonna do in those three, four hours. So I know I can actually get everything done. If okay, so tip number two is to dedicate a sort of cleanup period. And what I mean by that is, I usually call this cleanup because you're cleaning up all the tasks that you still have left to do. So let's assume I do about like, three hours worth of work on a really lucky day, right? And I do, I don't know, like a few questions in hour one. Uh, if if I'm splitting it into hours, if I do maths in hour one, I do biology in hour two and chemistry in hour three, something like that. It just completely depends on how I'm doing it. But if I have like a few questions left over from that, rather than eating into my break and doing those questions because I wanna quickly get them finished, I can dedicate those questions into my cleanup period. So if there's any work that I still haven't completed to do it in that cleanup. If I don't have any more work to do because I finished it all, then I can stop my revision. But if I still have some work that I haven't completed, then I have to use that cleanup period to like clean it up basically. And that kind of motivates me to get my work done early. So I don't have to have another hour of just doing work. So that way, I, I don't know, it, it works for me. And I really recommend you guys try it as well. 
especially if you have the problem where you start with a piece of work but then your break starts but you haven't finished that piece of work so you want to continue doing it and that's something that happens to me a lot so having this sort of like clean up period can really save time and also make sure you actually get the breaks that you deserve so for tip number three this is something to do with what you do during your study blocks and it's to quiz yourself as much as possible and it's got to do with like active recall and things but making sure you constantly quiz yourself whether it's through blurting flashcards exam practice whatever it, it really helps in engaging yourself firstly and also making that information stick in your head before you start like 50 minutes worth of work spend the first five minutes doing like a blur of that topic and then spend the rest doing whatever you're going to do and then end it with like another blur of that topic or of the next topic or like just some sort of way to quiz yourself or perhaps like a few exam questions at the end or just anything that can like make sure you're constantly engaging with the material. This doesn't have to be anything too serious. You could literally go to like BBC Bite Size and find one of those quizzes and just like attempt them or just find some sort of like one exam question that you might do at the end of your study block or just something really chill if you want. It doesn't have to be like an entire past paper or something. It's just making sure you're always jogging your memory and having that information in your head at all times. Now my fourth tip is to start easy and end easy and I think this is probably one of the best ways you can actually motivate yourself into doing work and getting all that work done by like making sure you start with something easy and enjoyable and end with something easy and like with a low priority effort required if that makes sense. So let's assume you've got a required practical write-up to do and they usually are really annoying and not fun at all so what you can do is if you have like two hours that you're going to study in to put that required practical write-up in between so you can spend the first 30 minutes for example doing uh, who knows if you like maths perhaps some maths questions or something or like even if you spend like the first 10 minutes watching like a few YouTube videos based on like biology or like chemistry or something even that could like make you in the mood for revision just something that requires little energy and you find somewhat enjoyable if you do that first and do that last you're more likely to get the stuff in between done as well even if you don't do your last block of revision if it was a low priority anyways then it's fine as long as you got that main bulk done that was the important part in the middle then it's something to be proud of. I feel like a lot of this and a lot of this study scheduling thing is really based on how it works for you so there's probably a lot of things that I do that's specific to me that might not work for you so I think it's all just dependent on what works for you and so that's why you have to like really try a lot of different things before you find something you can stick to and work well with. Now this does also bring me to my next point which is to stick with one thing and this is kind of going back to my first thing about like using study blocking and like that kind of thing. Just stick with something that works for you like I think in back in year 10 and 11 the one problem I really had was that I kept on switching between so many different apps and softwares and websites especially when I was like looking for a good Pomodoro website to use like you can literally go to YouTube or like the Google default timer and just put a 25 minute timer but for some reason I kept on downloading new and new apps trying to see which Pomodoro technique worked best even though they're all the same it's so weird like I, I feel like I spent more time trying to find a good source of like revision to do it from that I wasted time that I could have actually done revision for and I think this is something that is a big big problem with me even now I, f I just switch between things way too quickly so I would say keep with whatever works and if you need to switch then switch but if you don't need to switch then there's not really any point in switching to something else if whatever works works then you don't need to switch to something else there's no issue at all as long as you get that revision in then there's no problem at all and making sure that revision is actually effective as well. Now a lot of the time especially when like exams get really close I see a lot of people sit down for like three four hours straight and just revise and I'm not saying that's a bad thing but it can be very difficult to get through especially for me I think getting having like breaks is really really important and that's my one, two, three, four. And that's my sixth tip of the list as well. I think having breaks is just making sure you have regular breaks, not just having a break. Making sure you have regular breaks in between your revision is one way to constantly have your mind fresh. And that's probably something that you already know, but 
it's just something that needs to be like reminded because a lot of the time I like to sit down and then revise and then it would be a five minute break and then I would be like you know what I'm just going to continue with the work I'm doing right now I don't know how that just turned off in the background but I would just continue doing work even through my break and then after the break I would start like losing focus let's assume you have a three hour block of revision now I would say that ideally it depends on what sort of revision you're doing and how serious the revision is but for me if the revision is not very serious and it's like it's not much stuff then I would do 25 minute work and then five minute break and then again and again and again right just classic Pomodoro that's usually what I do especially nowadays because I'm right now mid year 12 there's not much going on there's like I do my revision of course but like it doesn't have to be too serious so I'm doing 25 minutes of work then five minutes break uh, like it's nothing too bad but when like exams come along my ideal Pomodoro split is I don't know what it's called but it's 50 10 so I usually do 50 minutes of work then 10 minutes of break because I like having a longer break because it can allow me to like be more relaxed because five minutes just isn't it just it doesn't kite for me so 50 minutes work is my ideal one especially when I have a lot of work to do it allows me to do the most work like after 50 minutes that's when I start losing focus and I think that's something you're gonna have to find out yourself if you haven't already you need to find that mark where you start losing focus and make sure you don't go over that but it, I think it's all dependent on how much breaks you do so doing more breaks is never a bad thing unless you find yourself procrastinating too much in those breaks if that's the case that you're using your breaks ineffectively and by that I mean like you go over your break and you don't stick to however much time you give yourself I mean it's most of the time fine but if you've got a lot of work to be doing and it's all serious I don't think you should have like 25 minutes and five minutes. I would say 50, 10 is better, but I think that's from personal experience. It really just depends on what works for you. There's this other Pomodoro split that I like a lot as well. And it's basically an hour of work, right? But it's a flexible hour. So you have to do the first 40 minutes. Like you don't have a choice about that. You have to be working the first 40 minutes, but then from 40 minutes to an hour, anywhere between the 40 and 60 minute mark you can stop working when you think you've finished your work so it's more flexible and that's definitely a good idea for people that have trouble with finishing their work and then whenever you decide to stop working then you can give yourself like a 20 minute break and that's like if I'm feeling very relaxed and there's not much work for me to do then I usually do that and yeah it just depends on what you find most useful I can't really say much more if you do have any like questions about like Pomodoro technique and finding ways to balance your time you can always leave them in the comments below but I think it all just depends on just testing different ways out and making sure you actually get your work done. Tip number seven is to target your weaker areas and I think the best way you can do this is before you start planning, this is for like big end of year exams or like um, GCSEs or A-levels or whatever, you need to get an entire list of all the topics that you have and like highlight them in terms of like how good you think you are at them and then from that you can then start working on your plan and then from the plan you can start working your revision so that's like the very first thing you should do the important part is that you're targeting those weaker areas and you're highlighting what you don't know that's the important part if you can do that you're already two steps ahead tip number eight the last one on the list is to switch things up now revision can be boring but it can also be more interesting you can make it more engaging and one way you can do that is by splitting your subjects up as much as possible so rather than doing all of English in one day and all of maths in one day and all of like biology in one day uh, to have in one day a bit of everything and in another day a bit of everything now it does really really depend on your style of learning now I, I know a lot of people that prefer having everything done all at once and then forgetting about it for a bit but I personally like to interleave everything and make sure that I'm doing a bit of everything all at once. I hope some of those tips made you think a bit more about how you should get revising and how you should make a plan for your revision uh, and I think my main thing for you guys is to just make sure you make a start on something whether that's like highlighting all your topic areas or making yourself a plan for the next day i'll see you again next time hopefully make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and i hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you again next week bye